We now welcome to Ebru today Jim Harrington, a human rights attorney with nearly four decades of experience and founder and director of the Texas Civil Rights Project. Harrington is the author of Wrestling with Free Speech, Religious Freedom and Democracy in Turkey, The Political Trials and Times of Fethullah Gulen. First, we'd like to find out what made you write that book? Well, you know, I was on an interfaith trip to um, Turkey and I uh, after I came back, um, I thought about it and was approached uh, about writing this book that uh, no one had written anything about the interface of a political trial and the further democratization in Turkey. So I took a year and a half uh, of evenings and weekends and, and came up with a book. It was fascinating. I've always been interested in international human rights, and this gave me an opportunity to uh, talk about the development of democracy in Turkey and the interplay with the European Union as it seeks to join them. And he specifically is a very fascinating and important presence. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, uh, he's had a lot to do with building a civil society in, uh, in Turkey and enhancing, helping the uh, middle class develop in Anatolia region on the Asian side and has pl played a major role, I think, in trying to democratize and bring civil liberty to the country. And this was basically a political trial the establishment resisting that and you know we see that happen quite often what was unique about this political trial is that usually people lose and in this case uh, Fethullah Gulen uh, won the trial took eight years and uh, won the trial but the whole interplay that went on during that time I think was uh, very influential in strengthening a uh, democracy and civil liberty in in Turkey religious freedom and press freedom so it was fascinating development during the course of writing your book about him did you get a sense that his accomplishments were being watched in countries surrounding uh, Turkey where, where his did you see his influence spreading oh yeah I, I think that's the thing that's impressed me is that it's become a, a movement that really is mo uh, external and it's reaching out to other countries it's very active in the United States very active in in uh, Europe you know and this uh, idea of uh, developing more civil society becoming more democratic and working to develop institutions that are not necessarily political but uh, bring about more participation in society. So mm -hmm. I, I think that you do see it expanding. I think it's, it's fascinating to me that you see a religious movement that has a uh, Sufi Islamic base uh, reaching out to other uh, religions and trying to uh, get folks to understand each other and work together. Um, I think it's a, it's a good lesson for the state of the United States, of, of our country at this point where we have so much uh, polarization and lack of dialogue mm -hmm. is to have a movement come along and say, you know, we may, not dis, we may not agree on stuff, but we need to talk about it. And then if we can find common approaches or common solutions, we've got to do it. Right now we have so much polarization. Sure. Don't we see know. a similar set setting where, uh, <clears throat> between the Israelis and Palestinians, where the women have come together and said, enough of the bloodshed, let's, let's find common ground. Yes. I think that's very important uh, to do. And you see that happening. You see that happen a number of times in recent history, where people just get fed up and just say we've got to make a uh, change you know and we ought to support that I mean certainly we ought to support what's going on with the women that you're talking about but we also need to work in our own country you know it's just uh, I, I I've never seen the kind of polarization that we have and we have such enormous problems mm -hmm. you know uh, education being an awful uh, problem which for is us. common to both sides exactly so why not try to get a solution and that's what I, th I, I give great credit to the movement. Mm -hmm. And the emphasis on the education, I think, is very important. Yes, I, I, there's something called um, the Gulen Schools. What, what, what is that? Is that a, a separate system, or is it integrated within the systems there? Well, the, the Gulen movement is very decentralized. Um, you know, it took a long time for me to understand that because, you know, being a lawyer, and we always look at stuff at hierarchical in the United States, a tight organization. But it's more of an, a, a movement that cooperates and associates uh, different parts of it and there are schools that start up by folks that uh, participate in the movement but they're independent schools uh, like we have a system in Texas called Harmony and there's a system in the Midwest and all that but it's a it's a, a non-sectarian it's not proselytizing in the sense of trying to bring people into a certain religion it's showing good example and emphasizing education how important education is for kids and these schools have a uh, great success rate and I think it's because the teachers are so focused and the kids are so focused and the parents understand this is a great opportunity you know and that's I think an important component of the movement is to emphasize so perhaps education. all of this to capsulize uh, it's about what's right versus what's dogma that's that a, that's absolutely right at the end of the day 
I think the most important thing for us is to learn how to live good lives, right? And it doesn't matter if you're Catholic, as I am, or if you're uh, Muslim, or if you're Jewish, or whatever, right? It ha it, that's the idea, is to come together, to work together, and to uh, strengthen and foster the human community. And I think the movement contributes to that. And I, for that reason, I, you know, I, I just am uh, very impressed with it. Fascinating well, stuff. Yeah, it is. It is impressive. And hopefully it'll make its way more here so we become less divisive. Yes. Thank yes. you so much, really. My pleasure.